Today I will show you the entire settings screen and to do so I want to let you know I have a Mustang Mach-E 2021 Premium Edition Standard Range Rear Wheel Drive so if you have a different model, maybe newer, it might be a little bit different. To get to the settings screen you press the car, then you press settings. Here it starts the first tile here which says sound. In sound you got one which says tone settings. You can press here that little arrow down. You have here different equalizer settings where you can move the bar to the right or to the left for treble, mid range or bass. Then you can scroll down. Here you, here you see the balance and fade. You can move the cursor up and if you want the sound more in the front or to the left, if you want more on the left or to the right or more to the rear. And if you press reset, it will always go to the center, to the default setting. Then you have here speed compensation, volume off. You can set it to low, medium or high. What does that do? So when you drive fast, the volume will go higher or lower depending on your speed because it compensates your speed and you can adjust how much it will adjust the, the volume while you go faster. Then you have different sound settings. Again, I press the little arrow down, scroll up. Here is a stereo or surround setting. Then the second tile is kind of interesting because depending on your device you're listening to, let's say you listen to Bluetooth or USB or Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, it will show you here maybe audio, but there is not much to set. But when you're in a radio station, you can get to the settings screen. Again, with the little arrow down, you get a bigger menu and here you can choose if the radio side shows you one, two, three, four, five or six rows of station. You can choose if you want HD radio and also radio text. What is radio text? Here it says displays information about the current FM radio broadcast if available. This feature is available when FM radio is your active radio source. So this feature is not available when you do AM radio for instance. So close. So what's about in the phone list? In the phone list here you can add a phone for Bluetooth connection. And here it shows you the existing phones. Um, when I go for example to my phone, I press again that little arrow down. And I open the settings as well. I selected it as a favorite device. So let's say three people come in the car with three different phones which are all hooked up. It will connect first to the favorite phone. Here I can connect to Bluetooth and media. I can also connect to Android Auto. And the same thing for any other phone. Then I get to the charge screen. In the charge screen, I see the location where I'm right now. It says at home. It waits for the preferred charging time. It shows me the state of charge and how many miles I can go. What's the setting for when it will start charging tonight at 11 p.m and it will turn off at 90% at approximately 5.50 in the morning. Here I could reset the EV driving history, which helps when your gasometer shows you an inaccurate range. You can reset the entire thing and it will start learning again your drive style and takes usually 500 to 1000 miles. Here's the departure and comfort setting. It is not active because I have nothing active in there. You gotta go to the pencil and here you could set it. When you look here on the right hand side on the top, I show you a link where it explains exactly how you adjust the departure and comfort setting. Then here you have charging locations. I have that active. What can you do when you press the settings icon? Here you can have different charging locations and in each charging location you can set the times when you want to charge. Again you press here the little cursor and you can adjust the maximum level and also the charge time. Here when you go on the top here on the screen you see a link to a video where it goes further into detail for that function. So now we are back. Let's go to personal profiles. Here I have two profiles set up. There's my own profile. I can press on it. I can change the name, change the profile picture. I was told that when you save a contact on your phone with your own name, same name as here, 
and same email address and phone number what you have in Forbus, then it can take over the picture so you have it up here. I didn't play too much with it, so I'm not 100% certain if it works and how it works, but apparently that's how it works. Then here you have an option intelligent suggestion to explain what it is. Here it says that uh, it will provide some tips based on your habit. For example, calls you might want to make or radio station you, want, you might want to listen to. Then here you could remove the key fob. You can add a phone if you haven't had a phone yet. You can choose what memory seat button you have near on your left armrest. Or you can just delete the profile. Here you can also change to the guest profile. If you ever go accidentally to the guest profile to get back, you know now we're on the guest profile. If you want to get back to your profile, you can um, just press here those icon, hit here the profile, and change to your profile. Now I'm back in my profile. Let's go back to the settings screen. And this was all what's here in the personal profile list. You can also add a new profile if let's say your spouse or somebody else in your family or friends use your car and they have their own fob or their own profile, they can add it here. So here's driver assistance. What do I have in driver assistance? Driver assistance, you can activate auto hold. That makes sure that the car stays put on a traffic light and doesn't roll back and forward. Here you can turn on or off traction control. I believe newer build have an actual physical button near the light switch. Here's a cruise control, adaptive cruise control. You have several settings. So here's a normal cruise control or adaptive cruise control. Then you have a lane centering with hands free. Activation prompts. Here to explain what it means. That means if you have that active, it tells you when Bluecruise is available, it will show your screen Bluecruise is available. Activate if you want. Then speed sign recognition makes you that the car actually uses the speed signs as its speed limit in the cruise control. Then you have speed limit assist, which just give you a warning when you are above the speed limit. You can adjust the tolerance. You can say five miles over the speed limit is fine with you, but you can also put it down to zero. And then here the lane keeping system, you can mess with this. You can say you want only an alert or alert and aid, which means the steering wheel starts vibrating. You can adjust the intensity. If the lane keeping assist is a little bit too aggressive, you can adjust it to low. If it's not that aggressive enough for your needs, you can adjust it higher. Then you have your pre-collision assist. Here you can show a distance indication, automatic emergency braking, evasive steering assist. If any of those functions you don't like, just you just turn them off. And here again, you can adjust the sensitivity. You can do it to high, normal, or low. Rear view camera delay, that is when you back up, but then you put the car in D and you still want to see a little bit of the rear view camera, it will stay on for a bit. Next one is the blind spot information system. That's the lights in the mirror for the blind spots. Cross traffic alert would be when you back up, it shows you a message that the car is coming from the side. Then reverse braking assist is when you back up that the car doesn't roll, it just brakes with it, sim similar like a one pedal drive in the front. And here driver alert, it will give you a notification when you don't pay enough attention. And I believe that also activates a notification when you are getting tired. So next is your vehicle. In the vehicle settings, you can choose a vehicle power down timer or that you have an alert if somebody sits in the back. Easy entry, that means the seat will adjust further back that you get better in. My key, my key just tells you how many my keys you would have available and um, how many admin keys. A my key needs to be programmed. My keys are keys for other drivers which you don't want to limit certain functions in your car like speed and such. And then you could program that and give them the key for. In this menu it just shows you the modem serial number, 
in the next menu you can turn on that the alarm system asks you when you get out of the car if it should activate the alarm or not that helps when let's say you go to the store you have the key fob with you but somebody is waiting in the car for you you can turn off the alarm so the alarm doesn't go off and here's the motion sensors you can turn them off or on then here's the remote start setup when i open this here i can activate that i can remote start the car through my park i can do climate control um, either i do last settings or automatic I can do that the steering wheel settings are off here for information it, it is um, about the seat heater and the steering wheel heater then you can also choose how long the automatic start should work the remote start you can choose 5 minutes or 15 minutes or 10 minutes then you have the options to change settings on the windows that you can remote open them which works with the key for Bobby's Park and then the wipers, you can activate a courtesy wipe, a rain sensing or the reverse wiper. Here is a setting about the lift gate. You can choose that you have only manual lift gate or automatic lift gate or even hands free lift gate. Some people turn off the hands free because sometimes they have the, the key near the car and the pad climbs under the car and it activates the, the trunk to open. Then here you have the light adjustment. You can do auto high beam, daytime running lights, welcome lighting. Welcome lighting needs to be on when you want the pony lights. It also shows here, this is for the pony lights. Then auto lamp delay, that is, um, change how long the lights stay on after you leave the vehicle then here with the locks I made our own video you see it again in the right corner how the whole locks work with the auto unlock the chirp the walk away lock so it doesn't honk when you walk out switch in here with an audible feedback and exterior light feedback just watch the video up here it shows you all that functions then here with the mirror it is important that you have auto fold if you want a pony light, otherwise you don't really need it except you want to save the space with the folded mirrors. Here's the door keypad code. You can change the access code to get in the car, but you need the factory code, which usually comes in a little business card size card when you buy the car. Otherwise you have to talk to your dealer to get the, give you the code. Then interesting is here the tire mobility kit. You can set how long the kit should wait until it sends you a reminder. This is the little kit you have in your back of the trunk. In case you have a flat, you can fill up the tire and they only last four years. So you can say, hey, after four years, I want a reminder so I can replace it. Then you can change your backup start code if you have a park. That is not active for my car because I don't have park active. Here is show brake coach. So the show brake coach activates the little screen which shows you how well the brakes regenerate. Here the low battery you can change when you get a low battery warning. At 20 miles, 30 miles or 50 miles range left. Here's the EV driving history. It's the same thing as before. You press and hold to reset. That is recommended if your range shown on the gas meter is not really accurate then you can do that and it will help you that it is more accurate. Here's the emergency tow. You're gonna press and hold and initialize. Check here the video on top. I explain how that works. Also, if the video doesn't pop up, I have all the videos on the bottom in the video description. Here you can change the speedometer to kilometer an hour. So let's go to the general settings. In the general settings, you can change the language. You can choose between English, Spanish or French. Then you can change the temperature units between Fahrenheit or Celsius. You can go different measurement units like miles and mile per kilowatt hour or kilometer and kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer or kilometer and kilometer per kilowatt hours. Then you can choose with the tire pressure units. You can choose I want PSI, kilopascal or bar. 
Then you can turn off on the touchscreen beep. Here's a sync version. So if your version is not the same as mine, the whole screen might look a little bit different. Then you get here some uh, software licenses. It sends you to a link to get more details. Here you could submit a feedback about the software. You can choose and select about what. And here you could do a full reset of four bus connect or a master reset on the car. Then let's go to the display setting. Display setting, you can choose here a calm screen. If you press this, the screen turns off. You just press the screen again, it comes back. Just to let you know, you can do the same thing when you press the button long. Now it's calm screen. Then you can go back to settings. We were on the display settings. Then here you can change the brightness. You can do more dark, more bright. You can change the instrument cluster to auto, light or dark. You can change the center display to auto, light or dark. So both screens can be adjusted individual. Then we go to clock. You can choose what's the time or 24 hour mode. And you can do auto time update or you just set it yourself. Then we go to connectivity. Here is connected vehicle features. What does that mean? Here is the vehicle connectivity that it shares data and location. You need all that active otherwise the plug and chair and some other stuff won't work right. So I just kept it all active. But it, if you don't want to share any information from your car, you just turn that all off. Then here you have Ford assistance, upload phone contact names, connected navigation, then Ford pass power my trip, but you can get trips from Ford pass embedded into the sink. Then here you can turn off Sirius. If Sirius is annoying you because you're not using it anymore, turn it off. Then you can go to the Bluetooth settings. Bluetooth is on and you can change the vehicle name if you want to. Wireless app pro projection is some information about the connection to the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto. Then Wi-Fi networks. Here you can activate Wi-Fi available networks. It shows you all your networks and you just can connect to your network and you can activate that notifications are active. Then we go to the vehicle hotspot. Here you can activate the vehicle hotspot. Probably when the car is new, it's active because I believe you get one month free. Some locations, maybe it's of certain data, which is free. Here you could set it up. Now it's the data usage, you ne only need the hotspot if you want Wi-Fi for yourself or for your passengers in the car. System updates. The updates don't need any Wi-Fi connection. It is okay with the data connection here. I had several updates which happened while I was not in the car, somewhere out of the house, far away from home without Wi-Fi. Then you can schedule updates. You can say what time you want the updates, but you don't need to. It will only, if the car needs to be off while you update, the car will actually tell you that an update is coming and it won't just start and stop you from driving. Then mobile apps. Here's an app list in four bus, which you can link to your car and run the apps from here. Then departure and comfort settings. I made an own video how you can set departure and comfort. Check the video description below. It shows you the link to the departure and comfort setting. Then 911 assist. You might want to have that active if you want to be able to call 911 through the hands-free phone. For the assistance, it shows you here different voice commands. You just Choose you, if you want to learn what's the voice commands for climate, you just open here and it tells you what options you have. Or with the mobile app, same thing, it shows you what options you have. With all that different, with media, navigation, phone, radio, or series. Then you can choose, uh, say, you, the voice command can st get started with a wake up word. You can even pick your own wake up word. There's four options which are listed here. I don't want to read them out loud otherwise. It will get activated. 
Then you can do advanced mode, advanced mode, reduce the number of voice prompts, so it won't allow you miss pronunciations. Then phone confirmation, I highly recommend that because when you tell your car that it should call a certain person and it accidentally picks a wrong person, it will just dial right away. When you have that active, when you say call Tim, it will actually tell you, do you want to call Tim? And it shows you the number and then you're good to go. Then here's a voice command list that's active, which means when you give a voice command and it isn't sure if it has the right voice command, then it will show you other options for voice commands. So now the last tile here is ambient lighting. Ambient lighting let you pick a color for your ambient lights. You have ambient lights only in the front of the car. You can choose different colors. You can change the brightness here. And don't forget, if you're in engage mode, you can pick a different color than in whisper mode. And in whisper mode is again a different color than in unbridled mode. So I hope this video helps you to understand all the settings. Don't forget to like my videos and subscribe to my channel and check the video description below. I will put a lot of different links for other videos as well. Hey, you're still here. So why not hit the like button and subscribe to my channel? I would really appreciate it. Thank you.